Today we're going to be learning about comparing common fractions. We're going to start off by looking at an example. In this example, we're being asked which fraction is larger, one half or three eighths. Be careful when you're being asked a question like this, you can't just look at which fraction has bigger numbers. Even though you might be used to bigger numbers meaning a larger value, in this case, it's not necessarily going to be true. Let's have a look at what these two fractions look like in diagram form. So over here, I've got the diagrams for both of these fractions. And when you look at the diagrams, you can clearly see that 1 half is actually greater than 3 eighths. You can see that in this circle over here, the half is a bigger portion of the circle than the 3 eighths is in the circle over here. So 1 half is greater than 3 eighths. But now the reality is most of the time you won't have diagrams to look at to actually compare the fractions and see which one is bigger or which one is smaller. So we need to have a method that we can use to help us to work this out. And that is what we're going to be learning about today. And that is using what we call the lowest common denominator. In order to compare fractions, we can't have fractions that have different denominators because then it's like trying to compare apples to oranges. You can't compare things that are different. Okay, so you need to have the same kind of fraction in order to be able to compare them. You need to have all halves or all thirds or all quarters or all fifths or all eighths. You need to have the same kinds of fractions in order to be able to compare them and see which one is bigger and which one is smaller. So. The first thing we need to do is, using what we learned in the last lesson, where we learned about equivalent fractions, is we need to make sure that these fractions have the same denominator as each other by using equivalent fractions and changing a fraction to have the same denominator as the other fraction. And then once they have the same denominator, once they have the same kind of fraction, in this case we're going to make them both eighths, then we'll be able to compare and see which one is bigger and which one is smaller. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would actually do this one. Okay, so over here, we've got one half and three eighths. So we need to find what we call the LCD. The LCD is actually the lowest common multiple of the denominators. It is the smallest number that both of the denominators, or if there's more than two fractions, all of the denominators can divide into evenly without a remainder. So in this case, the LCD is 8, because 2 goes into 8, and 8 also goes into 8. So the LCD is the smallest number that all of the denominators can divide into evenly. Okay, so my LCD is 8. So what I'm going to do once I've determined what my LCD is, is I need to change any fractions that don't already have that as the denominator by using equivalent fractions. So I'm going to change the half to something over 8. Now I need to look and see what do I do to 2 to get 8. I multiply it by 4, which means I need to multiply the numerator by 4 as well. Remember, when we are working with equivalent fractions, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. Whatever you do to the numerator, whatever you multiply by or whatever you divide by, you have to do the same thing to the denominator. So I'm multiplying the denominator by 4 to get 8. That means I need to multiply the numerator by 4 as well. So that's going to give me 4 over 8. And this is already over 8, so I don't need to change it. So it's just going to stay 3 over 8. And now that I've got the same kind of fraction, now they're both eighths, now I can compare them and I can say 4 eighths is more than 3 eighths because there are more of them. Okay, so that is greater. Once I know that, I can then go and answer the original question that I had, which was, which of those two fractions is greater? Now remember, 4 eighths and 1 half are the same as each other. They're equivalent. They have the same value. So if 4 eighths is greater than 3 eighths, that means that 1 half must also be greater than 3 eighths. So now I can answer the question. I can say, therefore, 1 half is greater than 3 eighths. Okay, so when we are doing a question like this, we first need to find out what is the LCD, because I can't compare fractions that don't have the same denominator. I have to have the same denominator. So I find the LCD, the lowest common denominator. That's the number, the lowest number that all the denominators can divide into without any remainders. Okay, so in this case, it was 8. I find the LCD, and then I change any fractions that I need to so that they have that LCD as their denominator, and then I can compare them, because then I have the same kind of fraction. And I can see which one is more, which one is less, and so on. And then I put it back into the context of what they asked me. They asked me about these fractions, so I have to answer about those fractions. Right, so now let's go and have a look at another example. 
So in this example over here, we have got the fractions 5 over 9 and 2 over 3. And we need to compare those fractions and see which one is smaller or greater than the other or if they are equal to each other. So over here, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the last example. So first, I need to determine what is the LCD in this example. Over here, I've got a denominator of 9, and this one is 3. Now, when one of the denominators is a multiple of the other, then this will be our LCD. They won't always work, it won't always work that way. But in this case, this is a multiple of that, which means that this is going to be my LCD. So my LCD is going to be 9. Okay? Both of these do go in to 9. So now, when I change them to have the same denominator as the LCD, this one I don't have to change at all because it already is over 9, so it's going to be 5 over 9. But this one I'm going to write as something over 9. So now I need to see what did I do to the denominator to change it to 9. I need to multiply that by, th by 3, which means I need to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. So it's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. So now I've got 5 over 9 and 6 over 9. Because they both are ninths, I can now compare them. I've got the same kind of fraction. Now I can compare and look at how many ninths they each are. This one is 5 ninths and that one is 6 ninths. This one is less than that. So I can say that this is less than over there. Once I know that, I then put it back to how I was given the fractions in the first place and I was asked to compare these two fractions. Now I can say, therefore, 5 ninths is less than 2 thirds because 2 thirds is the same as 6 ninths because they are equivalent to each other. Okay, so that is how we do that example. So now I'm going to give you a couple that you're going to do for yourself. In this first example that you're going to do, over here you're comparing the fractions 1 third and 2 sixths. And you need to see which one, or you need to see if the symbol over here should be less than, greater than, or equal to. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that example. So the first thing you should have found, looking at these two fractions, is that your LCD is 6. Okay, so now, once I know what my LCD is, I need to change the fractions so that they all have the LCD as their denominator. So 1 over 3 is going to change to something over 6. How do I get 3 to change to 6? I need to multiply it by 2. So I need to multiply the numerator by 2 as well, and that becomes 2 over 6. This is already over 6, so it doesn't change. So it stays 2 over 6. Now these are equal to each other. So I can put an equal sign there. That means I can now say that 1 third is equal to 2 over 6. And that's what you should have got for that example. Right, next example. In question B, you are comparing the fractions 3 quarters and 14 over 20. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that example. So here we've got 3 quarters and 14 over 20. You should have found that your LCD is 20 in this example. So we're going to make sure that both of these have got denominators of 20. And that's what we're going to compare. So how do I get from 4 to 20? I need to multiply that by 5, which means I'm going to multiply the numerator by 5 as well, giving me 15 over 20. This one's already over 20, so it's not going to change. It's going to stay 14 over 20. And now I can compare them. I can see 15 over 20 is more than 14 over 20, so that's greater than over there. Now I can say, therefore, 3 quarters 
is greater than 14 over 20. And that's what you should have got for that example. Right, now let's have a look at another example where we don't have one fraction that has a denominator that's a multiple of the other. Okay, in all the examples we've done so far, one of the fractions, the denominator, was a multiple of the denominator in the other fraction. But now we don't have that. So now the LCD is going to be a little bit more tricky to find. Okay, it's not just going to be the same as one of the denominators. Because if you look at it, I can't make the LCD 10 because 4 doesn't go into 10. I also can't make the LCD 4 because 10 doesn't go into 4 either. Okay, so I need to find a different LCD. I need to find something, the smallest number, that both of these can divide into evenly without any remainders. And in that, in this case, that is the number 20. So our LCD over here is going to be 20. Okay, now if you didn't realize that it's 20, if you used 40, it would still work. You'd still be able to compare the fractions. It just means that you would be working with bigger numbers in your fractions that you'd have to work with. Okay, so you can still do that and it would still work. But over here, I've got 9 over 10 and 3 over 4. And I know that my LCD is 20. Okay, so I'm going to go and make sure that both of these fractions now have the denominator 20. So I'm going to change this to something over 20 and this to something over 20. How do I change 10 to 20? I multiply it by 2, which means I need to multiply the numerator by 2 as well, and that gives me 18. How do I change 4 to 20? I multiply it by 5. So I need to multiply 3 by 5 as well, and that gives me 15. So now I can see that 18 twentieths is more than 15 twentieths, so I can say that this is greater than over there. So now I can then answer the question saying that therefore 9 tenths is greater than 3 quarters. And that's what you should get for that example. Right, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. For this first one over here, you are comparing the fractions 7 eighths and 4 sevenths. And you need to determine if it's less than, greater than, or equal to. And I'm going to give you one minute to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that example. So we've got 7 eighths and 4 sevenths. You should have found that your LCD is 56. Okay, so now I'm going to take that LCD and I'm going to change both of these fractions so that they are over that LCD, which is 56. How do I change 8 to 56? I need to multiply it by 7. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by 7 as well. So that gives me 7 times 7, which is 49. Then over here, I need to multiply the 7 by 8 to get 56. So I'm going to multiply my numerator by 8 as well, and that gives me two, 4 times 8, which is 32. Now I can compare 49 and 32. They both are over 56. And I can say 49 over 56 is greater than 32 over 56. So therefore, that means that 7 eighths must be greater than 4 sevenths. That's what you should have got for question A. Question B. Here we've got two quarters and four sixths, and you need to compare these. I'm going to give you one minute to work this out.
Okay, so let's go through that. So in this example, you should have found that your LCD is 12, okay? So now I'm going to change both of these to be something over 12. To change the 4 to 12, we need to multiply by 3. So I need to multiply, multiply my numerator by 3 as well. That gives me 6 over 12. And here I need to multiply 6 by 2 to get 12. So I need to multiply my numerator by 2. That gives me 8 over 12. So now I can compare 6 over 12 and 8 over 12. I can see that 6 twelfths is less than 8 twelfths. So now I know that 2 quarters must be less than 4 sixths. And that's what you should have got for question B. Right, question C. Here you're comparing the fractions 9 tenths and 5 sixths. And again, I'm going to give you one minute to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that. So over here, you should have found that your LCD is 30 in this case. Okay, so that means that I'm going to change these two fractions over 30. To change the 10 to 30, I'm going to multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply the 9 by 3 as well, and it gives me 27 over 30. To change the 6 to 30, I need to multiply by 5. So I need to multiply the 5 in the numerator by 5 as well, giving me 25 over 30. So now I've got 27 over 30 and 25 over 30. 27 is greater than 25, so now I can say therefore 9 tenths must be greater than 5 sixths. That's what you should have got for question C. Now you're going to do question D. Right, in question D you're comparing the fractions 4 eighths and 5 tenths. And once again I'm going to give you a minute to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that. So we've got over here, 4 eighths and 5 tenths. You should have found that the LCD for this is 40. Okay, so now when I change these, I'm going to have something over 40 and something over 40. To change the 8 to 40, I need to multiply it by 5. So I'm going to multiply the 4 by 5 as well, giving me 20. To change the 10 to 40, I need to multiply by 4. So I need to multiply the 5 by 4 as well, giving me 20. So these are both 20 over 40, which means that they are actually equal to each other. So now I can say, therefore, 4 eighths must be equal to 5 tenths as well. So that's what you should have got for that example. Right, now let's have a look at what we do when we are asked to compare more than two fractions. So all the ones we've done up until now, we've been comparing and just being asked, is it greater than, less than, equal to. But here, now you're being asked to arrange these fractions in ascending order. Now remember, ascending means going up from smallest to biggest. 
So we need to arrange these in ascending order. In order to do that, we need to actually compare them and see which ones are bigger, which ones are smaller. Okay, I can't arrange them if I don't know what sizes they are in comparison to each other. So what I need to do is the same thing, same thing that I just did in the examples we've been doing up until now. I first need to find my LCD. I need to change all of my fractions so that they have that LCD as their denominators. Okay, but now I'm not only looking at two fractions to find my LCD, I'm looking at four fractions. I need to make sure that I find the LCD for all four of those fractions. So I need to find the smallest number that all of these denominators can divide into evenly. Okay, so I've got over here 5, I've got 10, I've got 15, and I've got 3. I need the smallest number that all three of those, all four of, all four of those can go into evenly. And the smallest number they can go into evenly is 30. Every single one of these numbers will divide into 30 evenly. Okay, so I'm going to go and do this example now. So first of all, I've got the fraction 2 fifths, then I've got 3 tenths, then I've got 4 over 15, and 1 third. And I know that my LCD is 30. That is the smallest number that all four of these denominators can divide into evenly without any remainders. So I'm going to change all of these to something over 30. So this is going to be something over 30, this is going to be something over 30, this is going to be something over 30, and this is going to be something over 30. Right, so how do I change 5 to 30? I multiply it by 6. So I'm going to multiply the 2 by 6 as well, giving me 12. How do I change 10 to 30? I need to multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply the 3 by 3 as well, giving me 9. How do I change 15 to 30? I multiply by 2. So I'm going to multiply the 4 by 2 as well, giving me 8. And then how do I change 3 to 30? I multiply by 10. So I'm going to multiply by the, the 1 by 10 as well, giving me 10. So now I've got all of my fractions, the equivalent forms of them, with my LCD as their denominators. Now that I've got all my fractions over 30, I can now compare them. I can see what's the smallest one, what's the biggest one, and I can put them in the correct order. So I need to go in ascending, so from smallest to biggest. So I'm looking for my smallest one first, that's 8 over 30. So 8 over 30 is going to go first. Then 9 over 30. Then 10 over 30. And then 12 over 30. So now I know what order they're supposed to go in. But I wasn't asked to arrange these fractions, I was asked to arrange those fractions. So I need to make sure that I answer the question, which is arranging these fractions in order from smallest to biggest, in ascending order. So let's have a look. 8 over 30 is first. 8 over 30 is the same as 4 over 15. So I need to write that one first over here. So 4 over 15 is the smallest. Then I've got 9 over 30, which is over here, it started off as 3 tenths, so that's going to be 3 tenths over there. Then I've got 10 over 30, which was this one over here, that is 1 third. That's how I was given it in the first place. And then 12 over 30 is last, that was this one over here, which started off as 2 fifths. So now I've been able to write the fractions that I was given in order from smallest to biggest in ascending order, using the LCD to help me to work out or to compare them and put them in the correct order and then putting it back to the form that I was given those fractions. Okay, so now you're going to do a couple of these yourself. The first one you're going to do is this one over here. You have got four fractions that you're going to compare. You've got four sixths, five twelfths, one third and a half. And I'm going to give you a minute to put these in the correct ascending order.
Okay, so let's go through that. So for these fractions, you have denominators 6, 12, 3, and 2. You should have found that your LCD in this example is 12. So you're going to change all of these fractions to something over 12. Okay, so that's what we have to do first. Over here, how do we change something over 6 to something over 12? We need to multiply by 2. So I'm going to multiply the 4 by 2 as well, giving me 8 over 12. This one is already over 12, so I don't need to do anything. It stays as it is. This one is over 3, so I need to multiply that by 4 to get 12. So I'm going to multiply my numerator by 4 as well. That gives me 4 over 12. And then this one, I need to multiply 2 by 6. So I need to multiply my numerator by 6 as well, giving me 6 over 12. Now that I've got them all over 12, I can compare them. I can see what order them must they go in. Now, I was asked to do this in ascending order. So I need to go from smallest to biggest. My smallest one is 4 12. So that's going to go first. Then 5 twelfths is next. Then 6 twelfths. And then 8 twelfths. Right, now that I've got them in the correct order, I need to change them back to the fractions that I started with. So, 4 twelfths was originally 1 third. Five twelfths was always 5 twelfths, it never changed. 6 twelfths was a half. And 8 twelfths was originally 4 sixths. So that's what you should have got for that example. Right. The last example for today is this one over here. So again, you're going to arrange these fractions. Now be careful, this time you're being asked to arrange them in descending order, which means from biggest to smallest. I'm going to give you a minute again to work this one out. Okay, so let's go through this last example. So we're starting with the fractions 5 over 18, 1 over 3, 2 over 9, and 5 over 6. You should have found that your LCD over here is 18. Okay, 18 is the smallest number that all four of these can divide into. So now I'm going to change everything to something over 18. The first one is already over 18, so I don't need to do anything. It stays as it is. This one, I need to multiply 3 by 6 to get 18. So I need to multiply the 1 by 6 as well. That gives me 6 over 18. The next one, I need to multiply that by 2, the 9 by 2 to get 18. So I need to multiply the top by 2 as well, giving me 4 over 18. And then here, I need to multiply the 6 by 3 to get 18. So I need to multiply the numerator, the 5 by 3 as well, giving me 15 over 18. So now I've got 5 over 18, 6 over 18, 4 over 18, and 15 over 18. Now remember, you were asked to arrange these in descending order. So now we're looking for biggest to smallest. The biggest one over here is 15 over 18. So that's going to go first. Next, we've got 6 over 18. Next is 5 over 18, and then finally 4 over 18. And now I need to go and put them back to the kinds of fractions I was given in the first place. I need to change them back to those fractions. So 15 over 18 was originally 5 over 6. So that's going to go first. Then 6 over 18 was originally 1 third. 5 over 18 was originally 5 over 18. It never changed. And then 4 over 18 was originally 2 ninths. And that's what you should get for that example. And that is how we compare common fractions using the lowest common denominator. 
Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.